Hi, it's Dr. David Green, founder and CEO of R3 Stem Cell International. Today's topic is stem cell therapy for kidney failure. So what exactly does the kidney do? Well, it does a lot, actually. It removes waste products and excess fluid from the body. It removes a lot of drugs that get metabolized and excreted through the kidneys. It balances the body's fluids. It releases hormones that regulate our blood pressure. It produces an active form of vitamin D that promotes strong, healthy bones. And it con controls the production of red blood cells. So what are the various reasons that a kidney might fail over time? Well, to just show you how important the kidney is, the healthy kidneys filter over 200 liters of blood per day. High blood pressure and diabetes are the two most common causes of kidney failure. That amounts to 13% of all U.S. adults have chronic kidney disease, and that figure actually applies to the globe, all around, around the world. Medications that can lead to kidney failure might include um, NSAIDs, antibiotics, antivirals, various transplant medications, HIV medications, or diuretics. Additionally, there are a couple diseases, polycystic kidney disease or glomerulonephritis. Kidney failure is not something that happens overnight. It's the end result of a gradual loss of kidney function. Most people don't have any symptoms of kidney failure until they have less than 20% kidney function. So a couple more statistics. Over 10% of American adults, that's about 20 million individuals, have chronic kidney disease. That actually is uh, applicable to the worldwide population too. I, I just said in the last slide, it's about 13%. There's 600,000 people in the U.S. that are on dialysis. 100,000 are waiting for a transplant of a kidney, but they only do about 16,000 in the U.S. per year. So most people don't get off the list. So here's the stages of kidney failure. Stage one, nobody really knows they have it. It's mild. A glomerular filtration rate is over 90. That is one of the key indices of, of kidney failure, is glomerular filtration rate. The stage two is still mild. Glomerular filtration rate is 60 to 89. And then stage three, a person might start to have some symptoms. I'll show you those on the next slide, but the GFR is 30 to 59. Stage four, pretty much everybody has symptoms, which could be high blood pressure, could be anemia. Um, and then stage five is really complete failure. People are either on dialysis or staring at it. Um, and the GFR is very low, less than 15. So what are the symptoms? Well, everybody doesn't have the same symptoms, you know, but it could be itching, muscle cramps, feeling sick, vomiting, um, no appetite, leth lethargy, swelling because the kidney is not getting rid of the fluid it needs to, back pain, um, urinating more or less than normal, trouble breathing or sleeping. So let's talk about the traditional treatments and then we'll delve into the stem cell therapy. Traditional treatments are not fantastic. Um, lifestyle, if a person's diet is terrible, they should you know, fix that. Uh, if a person's a smoker, um, they should stop. Um, exercise is encouraged. Uh, control of blood pressure and blood sugar. Medications such as uh, phosphate binders for bone protection, uh, diuretics, um, iron or EPO for anemia, um, lower cholesterol medications, and then high blood pressure medications. So when you move into the last frontier, you're looking at either dialysis and then maybe a transplant. Dialysis really takes over for the kidney. It artificially removes waste products and extra fluid from one's blood. Five to 600,000 Americans are on dialysis. And, you know, it's pretty inconvenient. It's three times a week for about four hours. There are some risks involved, which could be infection at the fistula site, maybe a blood clot. The cost of dialysis in U.S. dollars is over $100,000 a year. Medicare usually pays 80%, so that's still a decent, you know, chunk of change that a person would still be responsible for. The average lifespan for an individual on dialysis is about five to 10 years, all right? Now let's look at transplant. 100,000 are on the U.S. list every year for a liver tra uh, kidney transplant, and about eight, 16 to 18,000 receive that. The average waiting time is over three and a half years. 
13 people die every day in the U.S. waiting for a transplant. Now, transplant patients uh, for a kidney do live longer than those on dialysis. You do have to be on immunosuppressive medications for life. If you get a living kidney donor, those last about 12 to 20 years. And if you get a deceased kidney donor, those last about 8 to 12 years. So let's talk about stem cell therapy. Stem cell therapy is a new paradigm of treatment for kidney failure. It can actually help with repair and regeneration. It is not a cure for kidney failure, but as you'll see in these research studies and our experience has been fantastic at helping people potentially avoid the need for dialysis or get off of dialysis if they've been uh, put on it. Here's a paper out of 2020 Brazil. They reviewed 13 human studies for acute kidney injury. And what they found is that cellular therapy with mesenchymal stem cells has benefits in preclinical studies through various mechanisms. And these include reducing inflammation, reducing cell death, anti-apoptosis, um, reducing uh, oxidative stress, reducing scar tissue, reducing uh, the body fighting against itself, and promoting new blood vessels. So a lot of things that stem cells promote. Um, it's very promising and should be part of the treatment of acute kidney injury patients in combinations with other approaches that are already available. So here's a study, uh, MSC transplantation, a promising therapeutic strategy to manage the onset and progression of diabetic nephropathy. Diabetes is a huge cause of kidney failure. Um, and when you offer stem cells for individuals who have diabetic nephropathy, um, it's very safe and it can help protect the kidneys for various ways. And here's a, a diagram from that study which shows you know, when the mesenchymal stem cells are infused uh, into the body and the kidney receives them, um, there's so many things that happen. There's reduction of scar tissue, reduction of cell death, which means you have more cells in the kidney to help function, um, reduces um, immune system fighting against itself, uh, promotes new blood flow um, and helps promote cells differentiate into uh, kidney cells. So here's a study looking at mesenchymal stem cell derived extracellular vesicles. Now stem cells um, have lots of byproducts and some of those are called extracellular vesicles. Other people know them as exosomes. This paper is out of the Mayo Clinic. Um, it states that there's accumulating evidence indicates that mesenchymal stem cells release extracellular vesicles, known as exosomes, that deliver genes, microRNA, proteins, to the recipient cells, which act in a cell-to-cell -cell communication and help promote all the things you saw on the last slide. So when we do our treatments in Pakistan and other countries, the mesenchymal stem cells have a lot of exosomes that they give off and help with renal repair, renal protection, and for other disease conditions. So the exosomes exert their trophic and repair effects by shuttling the genes, the microRNA, the proteins, to the recipient cells in the kidney, which can reduce renal injury and improve recovery. Uh, here's a paper, umbilical cord mesenchymal stem cells <clears throat> derived extracellular vesicles can ameliorate the progression of chronic kidney diseases. So this paper was fantastic. They took 40 patients and they randomized them to either placebo or the mesenchymal stem cells with exosomes. And these patients had either stage three or stage four kidney failure. And they noted that pretty much all the patients in the stem cell exosome group obtained an improved glomerular filtration rate. Their creatinine and BUN went down dramatically. Urine output increased. No participants experienced any significant adverse events, um, and they followed patients for a year. So administration of cord blood mesenchymal stem cell derived exosomes is safe and can ameliorate the inflammatory immune reaction and improve the overall kidney function in those who have later stages of kidney failure. Great study. This is exactly how we treat uh, patients with umbilical cord blood mesenchymal stem cells and exosomes. Cell-based therapies for experimental chronic kidney disease. 
Um, I usually don't include animal studies in my videos, but this one was fairly compelling, so I thought I would include it. This was a meta-analysis, meaning the authors pulled a ton of studies and then tried to come up with some conclusions. This had over 70 animal studies that totaled 1,835 animals. Um, Cell-based therapy improved all the functional parameters, reduced the progression of kidney failure. So in the animal world, um, they showed improved renal function that was very safe. Um, and basically, um, this is what you, know, you do before you get to the human studies that I showed uh, before. So this was a paper out of USC here in uh, America, uh, 2018. This was a review of um, uh, stem cells and kidney regeneration. And they pulled a ton of studies and they showed that administration of bone marrow derived mesenchymal stem cells um, were most effective cell type in slowing development and progression of kidney failure. Uh, they showed a reduction of BUN, improved glomerular sclerosis, meaning less scar tissue, um, and they showed that uh, given the extensive experience, uh, they didn't see any tumor formation either. Um, so stem cells were shown to help very much, um, as well as being very safe and not provoking any tumor formation. So in many small studies, there's tons I didn't show you, our early clinical trials, our own experience in many, many patients over the last eight years, shows that stem cell therapy for kidney failure is not only safe, but typically very effective. Our treatment consists of umbilical cord stem cells plus exosomes, like you saw in those studies. Um, and we do know that it looks like very high stem cell numbers are necessary. So for later stages of kidney failure, we give at least 20 million stem cells, sometimes 30 million. You don't need to inject it right into the kidney. We do uh, our treatments into uh, peripheral vein, IV. Um, and the umbilical cord uh, stem cells give fantastic results um, over and over. I do want to mention that if someone recommends to you to look at embryonic stem cell therapy or induced pluripotent stem cells, those are not ready for clinical use uh, by a long shot. There are still issues with rejection from the body, tumor formation, so on. So. We stick to mesenchymal stem cells and hematopoietic stem cells, which are, have shown to be safe, very safe, very effective, and they don't have any of the issues as, as you see with those other ones like rejection and tumor formation. So I want to talk about our, our international treatment program in Pakistan. We have a location serving uh, Islamabad and Rawalpindi. We do have a lot of patients who come in from other countries and other areas of Pakistan. Our process starts with a free phone consultation. Um, our licensed, experienced stem cell doctors will look at uh, your medical records. They will speak to you and find out your history, what treatments you've tried. Um, and then you'll have a patient concierge representative dedicated to you to help with travel logistics um, and you know, getting you to and from the appointments. I do want to talk about the cells a bit. Um, we use umbilical cord stem cell tissue from the U.S. Um, it's processed um, at FDA regulated labs um, under the quality assurance standards that they um, put out, uh, which means it's been tested for everything you can think of uh, as far as communicable diseases. Um, we have a pristine safety record over the last eight years and 15,000 stem cell procedures. These are very pure potent stem cells, growth factors, exosomes, cytokines, secretomes. I call it a virtual orchestra of regenerative cells and proteins. R3 Stem Cell, we're one of the uh, oldest uh, regenerative medicine companies in uh, uh, the U.S. We've been uh, doing many procedures over the last eight, nine years. We've been featured on all major media outlets, and this year we were named 10 most innovative companies of the year 50 smartest companies of the year, and recently the USA's, USA's leading regenerative therapy services provider. So we recognize that uh, Pakistan has a significant need for these treatments, so we're offering them. Um, and the process is very simple to get started. Please call us at the US prefix 888-988-0515 and visit us online at r3stemcell.com 
slash Pakistan, where you'll see a ton of educational information for you um, and additional ways to get started with us. Thank you very much for watching.